and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube. For our last deck of the day, we got a brand new one here. We got mono green midrange, and Hawkeye finally decided to come join us here before this deck. Uh, so this, this is a new one that I kind of put together as another way to play Karn the Great Creator. Talked about earlier uh, with the Demir Affinity Forge, I think Karn's in a pretty good spot to try to slow down these food decks and Witch's Oven decks. Um, and so I wanted something else to play Karn. And so I wanted to try out this mono, mono green shell with Karn with, of course, you know, focusing on Nyssa a lot here too with Nyssa doubling our mana, which is something you really want with Karn. You want a whole lot of mana because some of the best artifacts to grab with Karn cost a lot of mana. I think one one really nice artifact to be able to go grab with Karn is, of course, the Great Henge. You know, the Great Henge is an artifact. We get to we can go get uh, the Great Henge from the sideboard with Karn. Um, and then with the Great Henge, you know, we can start drawing lots of cards, of course, with all of these creatures and everything. So we're, we're ramping up with these two drops. We're going to go Growth Chamber Guardian because we're kind of focused on the Great Henge with one copy of the Great Henge in the main, but then Karn kind of acting as three more copies of the Great Henge. So we kind of have four. The great the great henges in the main deck, um, and then of course we have we have the Nissas that that help ramp. Obviously, Brontodon and Yorvo are just really nice sized creatures that also help with the with the great henge. Brontodon being pretty well positioned right now, also kind of same. You know, Questing Beast is just an awesome card. You know, Vivian going with these things is really nice. We got some removal with Voracious Hydra. Um, sideboard, basically we have. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of counterspell decks, and we've been playing against a whole lot of counterspell decks today. So we got the full four shifting ceratops um, in the sideboard for the counterspell decks. But Karn's just going to be grabbing spyglass, uh, golos, great henge, and then meteor golems. You know, so we're going to have more removal with all these with three meteor golems, especially if we have Nissa and Ugin. The meteor golems start not not costing very much mana. So we got a whole bunch of meteor golems there to go grab. Um, Besides that, another Bronzedon to slow down aggro decks and destroy artifacts and enchantments. A return to nature. Do the same thing. And then I want to try a once in future in the sideboard against control. It's instant speed, so it's good against the counterspell decks where it can just be a, uh, a draw two, but draw two really good spells at instant speed. Give us a, a good little threat there against control. A nice card to have. So yeah, so p let's try this mono green mid range deck. Oh, the, the the picture is Bond of Flourishing. Well, I started with have having a Bond of Flourishing in there. We'll just make it Corn, I guess, or Nissa. It's really a Nissa deck. So we'll see how this new deck uh, plays out. So we're, we'll play four matches over in ranked with mono green mid range. Okay. Hey, buddy. You've been loving Once in Future and your self-mill embodiment of Agony's deck. That sounds sweet. I like embodiment of Agony's. I think that's an underrated card. I like that one. Yeah, that sounds like a sweet deck. All right, double incubation druid. We'll give this a try. We got 25 lands in the deck. Oh, it's on me. Can't see these cards over Hawkeye. That me. Very miscreant. Wasn't exactly what I was expecting. 
Hmm. Well, we could Voracious Hydra and kill that thing. It's probably better just to start getting more lands out here. Yeah, it'd be good to save the Voracious Hydra for that. And of course, if they have another one, we can uh, use the minus three from the Arcbo Ranger. Does that thing have flash? Yeah. Boom, boom. That was. I think we've had a little bit better turns here than our opponent. With the Arkbow at my side, I can't lose a fight. We're going to tear you apart. Uh, Sergeant Fu. Hopefully that's pronounced correctly, but SJT, thank you so much for the sub. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, that green castle is really putting in some work for us. Yeah, that's for sure. It, it really did there. So thank you so much there, Sergeant. Our 22nd sub of the day. I'm not sure if we need to cyborg too much i could see karn just kind of being a little slow and maybe just playing ceratops instead of karn which means that we don't really have access to the other sideboard artifacts though all right started having a little hairball there but he's okay Yeah, I'll maybe take out Ugin also. All right, we'll just bring in Bronson on Ceratops, take out Ugin, kind of get lower to the ground. Against the deck that's trying to go above us. Karn's just a, Karn's a powerful card. Like The question is, why are we playing Karn in the deck? Karn's a powerful card when you have a lot of mana. There's a lot of good artifacts that cost a lot of mana, and, and that's what this deck with its ramping ability and with uh, Nyssa can get to a lot of mana. Um, there's also the most popular deck in the format right now is also Jun Sacrifice that's, of course, built around Witch's Oven, and Karn shuts that down. Good start, good start. One drop, two drop, Imperion Eagle, good start. Um you can go Ceratops here and then next turn Vivian kill and then have Ceratops be able to have reach. I could I could have gone Vivian, put counters on the incubation druid so it could add three mana, but then they could kill Vivian. All right, so now I can't have... I, I won't have the extra mana to be able to have reach. 
with the Ceratops. I've survived an apocalypse. But we're definitely still killing the Eagle. Get him. And then I just attack. Since we won't be able to block. So they're going to have lethal. You know, obviously they have the Brazen Borrowers in play. So they have lethal on board. So I need to keep one mana available for the Ceratops. To block. This thing has reach, right? Okay, good. I was like, I'm not crazy, right? GG's. Alright, game three. We'll be back on the play. It was a good hand. Got a good hand there. Yeah, that's true. Ugin is removal. That's true. We're hoping just kind of outrace him with, uh, you know, questing beast and ceratops and stuff like that. Um, we have mulliganed every game. I guess no. I think the the first. I think game one we kept our hand. Ooh. Hmm. We have to get rid of a four drop. <laughs> They're all good though. Guess I'm getting rid of that. Really hope no Apirion Eagle and no Rally of Wings. Yeah, so that's that's yep, exactly. So yeah, we just gotta erase them. I could, see, I could see putting back the Ceratops instead of Viviana. Ugh. That hurts. Gain six life. If they're willing to just fire it off that early, that means they probably have another one. Which would be really devastating if they have another one. Well, maybe they, I guess they don't have another one if they blocked. We're just playing this Pumps your Vo.
All right, we got 11 coming in here. This looks pretty good for us. I feel like they should have just played like the other healers. I think I think they fired off this rally of wings too early. So they could have. Yeah, I think they fired off that thing a little too early. But still a good curve for us. We hit those land drops and picked up the W. So we're one to know. Yep, yep, I think they, yeah, I agree. I think they fired off the rally too early. I think we keep it. This is kind of a slower hand. I mean, Yoru was a good three drop. No land. That is awesome. Pass the turn. Wow. That is very good for us. Quench is not very good for us. Darn. They're going to have to do something to answer this questing beast here. All right, let's get Ceratops. Not sure if I just want to cut all the Karns again this time, though. I guess it is Karn. Yeah, you could definitely change yeah, you could definitely change Growth Chamber Guardian for something else. You don't have Growth Chamber Guardian. Yeah, it's it's not that vital. I'd I'd probably play I'd play a fourth incubation druid if you have incubation druid first. And then you can play stuff like Wildborn Preserver, Crowl Harpooner. I don't know, just play other things. Maybe play some more Brontanons if you want. Yeah, you, you can definitely play the deck without Growth Chamber Guardian. It's probably it's probably the least important card in the deck, actually. <laughs> I'll take out one Hydra. Goose. That's a good card to Harpooner. Yeah, I have the Ixalan Spyglass in the sideboard.
Oh, don't have Brazen Borrower. Obviously, my, my plan here is to adapt Incubation Druid, of course. I hope they don't have Brazen Borrower. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did have borrower and didn't bounce the druid. Probability of resolving is slim. Seek shelter in my stewardship. It did though. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Hmm. Counter spell still good. We got four Ceratops in here. That's what we want to draw. That doesn't get countered. It can, can block Brazen Borrower. There's a reason why I put four Ceratops in the sideboard. Uh, no, my opponent didn't necessarily know I had Vivian.
I, mean, I, I did, yeah, like y'all, y'all are saying that that they had to know for them not to counter the Nissa. I mean, it makes the Nissa is it doesn't beat the borrower, and so they probably wanted to save it for a removal spell, something that beats the borrower. The Nissa doesn't, and so I had one. I had one card left in hand, and so if I'm leading with Nissa, they were probably thinking that I had something that could kill borrower. They don't need to use it on the Nissa. I don't think that means my opponent's ghosting. I don't think so at all. They they know that, like their borrower beats this Nissa where where the life totals are at, and with the night pack ambusher out here and everything. to the sounds of the wild. You picked the wrong fight. The land shall conquer you. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, the, the swinging that I was considering doing was with the three Growth Chamber Guardians. Obviously, we want to wait a turn for the forest for them to be indestructible. We gotta get pretty lucky here with a good top deck. That'll do. Yeah, we have yeah we have four ceratops in the deck right now. That that ceratops would have been our best draw. So how can we get this voracious hydra to resolve? No, sideboarding does not count towards the 30 minutes that you have, no. We'll 
Well, these are horrible blocks if... Those are horrible blocks if I had a way to stabilize. The, the only way you would make those kind of blocks... Especially, like, throwing a 3-3 in front of the 5-5 trample. Is if you know... Like, so they gotta have a hard counter that they that they feel really safe. Because otherwise, those are horrible blocks. I really wish we drew Ceratops and we could really punish them for those blocks. What? Okay, or, or they're just all in. Or they had nothing else and they're just all in on that, that Brazen Borrower. I guess they're just all in. Which, that's also fine, too. That's a, that's another reason to make those kind of blocks whenever you're just all in. Those are not blocks to try to survive for another turn. Yeah, I wonder what, wonder what was in their hand. They just had lands or something but they I think they missed a bunch of land drops though so I don't know I don't know if only we had two lands the hand would have been good so we got we got a plan druid beast ranger we got a plan. Yep, we're playing three Yorvos. Unclear how good our plan will be, but it's a plan. Also, just Hydra for one kill the innkeeper. It's pretty likely they have Bone Crusher Giant. Right, that they're going to kill this Paradise Druid. At least that's their plan. I could do two. Nah, just one. And now, may we play Nissa next turn? You have a similar list, but Selesnia. You have a Johnny as an option for Vigilance. And then the pump in with the minus. Okay. Awesome. If they do not have Brazen Borrower and we get to untap with Nissa. Then we could just go Beast Ranger next turn. If we draw a forest, we could play Yorvo Beast Ranger. Wait, can we do that anyway? So it's 6, 8, 10. And that costs 11. Tilt. So yeah, we need to draw a land to go Yorvo Beast Ranger. They're 
probably getting Spyglass, and that's just going to take out my Yorvo's be my Yorvo Beast Ranger dream. Well, wait, maybe not. Can I can I use this to get that extra mana? If we draw if we draw a forest, we do, do do we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Actually, yeah, if we draw a forest, we can still do it because of the castle extra mana. Even if they spy glass Nissa and we don't get to untap land. Coil. Splash. Hmm. Okay. Game two. Certainly worried about Lucky Clover. Not sure I want to take anything out, though. Ugh, I kind of want to play... A return to nature, another Bronson on, something like that. I kind of like what our deck's doing here, though. I guess I could, if I, if I take out Growth Chamber Guardians, I could play a nature, a Brontodon, a once in future, and then just something like a Meteor Golem. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, that's a the sign of a good mid range deck is when you can be aggro. You can be control depending on what you're playing against. Ooh. This could be Growth Chamber Guardian right there. Ah, oh, what a hand. As we know, two of my least favorite cards. We were talking about with the... I guess it was in the Nimizit deck. This is my least favorite deck in Standard that we're playing against. They decided that playing a deck, you know, like they made, they just made all sorts of adventure creatures that are very reasonably costed and they're all two for ones and that wasn't good enough. They had to just put complete engine cards like uh, Lucky Clover and Edgewall Innkeeper in there anyway. But unfortunately, they only had the two lands. Well, unfortunately for them. Fortunately for me. But they only had the two lands, and so it didn't do anything else. Our deck's feeling pretty good, though. You know, like, it's... The, the thing about playing a monocolor deck like this is we're really consistent. You know, like, we're not missing colors of, of mana. 
we're playing our seven mana creatures to be able to you know, uh, help us ramp and um, you know we just have a really consistent mana base where we don't where we don't struggle you know we're not um, you know we don't just have all green mana and we can't play our red spells or anything like that. Thanks, Rose. Yeah, glad you're liking the the addition of Karn. Yeah, like the Karns, um, you know, like this this deck can get a good amount of mana, and the Karns can um, can do a whole lot with a, a lot of mana. Yeah, we played against Must Be Nice yesterday. I don't remember what they were playing. Probably John to Sacrifice, because we played against a lot of John Sacrifice yesterday. Oh no, it's not. The Bolt. I haven't used... I got the Bolt sleeves yesterday. I haven't used them yet. So obviously we have a very good turn two and a very good turn three with this hand. Uh, that's it. <laughs> don't have anything else going on. So that's that's what our draw steps are for, though. So make flash again. Yeah, that is really nice. Karn being able to search for the Great Henge. So we have one Great Henge in the main deck, but it's almost like we're playing four Great Henges in the main deck because of the... Uh... Well then. Because of the three Karns as well. But again, this matchup's a little slow for Karn. <laughs> right, take out the Karns. No, I don't think they're gonna re reprint Nykthos in standard. No, I don't think so. Like, I don't think I'll be in the in uh, upcoming Theros. Girl Chamber Guardian is pretty good against Simic Flash, just because it gives you those multiple bodies. Yay, Ceratops. I don't want to just activate it and then they bounce it. We'll wait for them to tap out. Alright, so I know that the Ceratops won't be able to be countered anyway. I just want to go double Guardian. Thanks. <laughs> just put, put, put a Growth Chamber Guardian back in the deck to go find again. Well, that's better than Ceratops getting either gusted, that's for sure.
Yeah, so my opponent's basically playing like they're on the play here because that, that gross spiral. You know, so they got, even though I was on the play, they got to Nissa first. Say so again, the, the gross spiral is, is a really, really good card. It's one of the best cards in Standard. Even though it's not always thought of as one of the best cards in Standard, it is. So we can kill their Nissa. I, no, I guess they could have a negate. Uh, never mind, we're not going to be able to kill their Nissa now. Man, what a hand. Yeah, never mind. I mean, I guess I keep it. We were going to be able to go Ceratops, put two counters on Ceratops to make it a 7-6, and be able to kill their Nissa. And life was going to be a lot better. They got me. Let's play another one. These are four fast ones. Let's play let's play a fifth match. GG. Ugh, gross spiral really enabled enabled my opponent to have really fast hands there. You know, turn three and turn four ambushers the first game and then them getting Nissa in play before me, a couple of ether gusts. Or critical, especially that second one. Um, I'll probably play historic tomorrow. Are are the historic suspended? Like, is that is that in effect? I assume it went into effect with the update yesterday. But yeah, I'll probably play some historic tomorrow because we got the twelve hour stream. So, um, yeah, I'll probably do some historic tomorrow. Let's draw paradise. Let's draw a druid, paradise or incubation. Let's just draw draw a druid here. Uh, boo, not druid. Don't have growth spiral. Druid, you're too late. Need you last turn. Yay, no growth spiral. Gotta get Risen Reef out of here, of course. Because there's always more Risen Reefs. So I guess, okay, if I play, if I say one, yeah, I guess we're just gonna say one. Then I can just. I can play Questing Beast also. This will be fun to watch. Hey, 
you think if the person on the draw had two extra cards, you'd rather go first? So the person on the draw started with nine and you start with seven? Definitely not. No, I'd definitely rather go second at that point. Think about like your, I mean, it's it's not quite the same, but it's like your opponent being on a mold of five and you having seven. Like you'd rather go second and have the seven. Now bump it up and there's, you know, the difference between five and seven and then seven and nine, that's quite a bit. You know, at some point the, the cards don't matter too much. The extra cards. Mm. I'm just going to keep it the same. I kind of want to play the once in future instead of... Um, hey, Hawkeye. Instead of Brontodon. Like, I, I love Brontodon in this matchup. <laughs> Unfortunately, we drew Brontodon. So we'll have Druid, Druid, Nessa. No Risen Reef. Yuck. playing Cavalier of Thorns I just played my Paradise Druid. Wow. <laughs> I have six lands in play. Wow. Turn three Cavalier of Thorn. I guess I'll get Yorvo and play first to start trying to build it up to be bigger than at Cavalier. That's a lot of good stuff over here, though. Yeah. All these Aether Gusts. Killing me. Why don't I get Veil of Summer? Everybody else gets Aether Gusts. Hey, Pitch. Welcome. So weak block. So I can't really kill the Cavalier Thorns because they get back Krasis that draws millions of cards. So I'm going to be playing Ugin and just ticking up and making a blocker. Ow. Do not underestimate my fortitude. That's a good blocker. 
Speaking of blockers. Have a lot of mana. I don't know what we're doing with all said mana. Maybe, maybe I should have just held on to Brontodon and Paradise Druid and gone and grabbed Great Henge actually, and then been able to draw more cards. Hmm. Okay. That works too. I guess that was the best thing to do with all of said mana. Okay, so four and one. Our deck felt pretty solid. Like, you know, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily that it, um, you know, it could go toe to toe with like opponents' best draws, but it wasn't necessarily that we had like it was just amazing. But it's just really consistent. Um, pretty straightforward. The, you know, we didn't again didn't play against John Sacrifice. Kind of surprising after yesterday. Whenever we played against John Sacrifice, a ton. And I, you know, had a lot of uh, deck building considerations today for the John Sacrifice matchups. We played against it the very first match with Demir Affinity Forge, the very first match of the day, and then didn't didn't play against it after that. Um, so the next five, six, seven, ten, fourteen, the next fourteen matches didn't play against him. Anyway, um, yeah, the deck felt good. I like I liked what we had going on here. I think it was just it was just solid. You know that's it's a good um, a good adjective to describe a deck. Just felt solid. So there we go. That's mono green mid range. Those of y'all on YouTube, let me know what you think down in the comments. Of course, hit that like button. Also, if you're trying the deck out, also let me know how it's going for you over there. Um, but yeah, we'll have to we'll have to play this deck again, because yeah, it felt pretty good. So uh, thank you so much for watching some Mono Green Midrange though, and I'll see you for the next video.